This is Pastor Brian. I'm the pastor here at Cherry Grove Church of the Nazarene. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or you're uh, checking us out on our website, watching it live or checking us out on the replay, uh, we're just thankful that you're here with us this morning, uh, coming to church with us. We're not just about Sunday morning as well. We have Sunday school uh, before church and we have small groups that meet through the week. We also have Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30 and our teens meet then. You can see all that in our announcements and on the website and Facebook page. Give us a shout out. Let us know, hey, if you're new here, by the way, uh, put a comment in the comment section. Let us know uh, that you're here and we're thankful we can have you here with us today. But it's getting time to start for church. So grab your Bible and let's go to church. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. This morning, we'd like to start with our missions video. Glenn? Like I was, I start feeling like I wanted to do something else than just attending to Sunday services. So I hear about all the projects that Empawa was doing. So I went to Greece and I was there for three months. In Greece, we were in north of Greece, in Thessaloniki, close to Thessaloniki. So we were working with refugees in camps. For the first three months I was in uh, Kolkata and that was in a CDC in Lakshmi Kanpur. So we helped in the CDC. We were working as teachers there and I was given in charge of the first grade. I heard in Nepal itself 144 churches are here in Nepal itself and God is opening me to serve and all the churches and it was my desire not only in only one church to serve as a missionary I want to help different different churches to encourage to everyone. The idea was that we wanted to create opportunities for people from Eurasia region uh, to be involved in cross-cultural missions. It has very much to do with what Jesus says in Matthew 28 when he says to all his disciples, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. So it's not just for people from the West, it's a message to every culture and to every Christian in every culture that there are these last words of Jesus uh, which ask us to go beyond where we are whether it is in our communities, in people that we have not read yet reached, whether it is in our district in becoming involved with a different church plant, or whether it is to actually go to a different culture, a different district, and to see how God is working there, but also to, be, to assist the mission that is taking place there. So this morning for missions, I also have a couple of announcements. This month's focus is the school pale packs, and I've talked with Krista Norman about the Kids Hope Project where we mentor children at the Forest View School. So for the next two Sundays, um, anyone who would be willing to bring in school supplies to, do to donate for the children. Um, I turn them in at the welcome desk, and Krista and myself will gather them up, and Krista can get them to the children at Forest View School. Also, our church has a very loving church family, and we have lost some of our members recently. So the memorial roll through Nazarene Missions International this certificate is presented in memory of Jason Barnes, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. This certificate is presented in memory of Walter Wally Renshaw, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. This certificate is pre presented in memory of Francis Sharp, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. This certificate is presented in memory of Bob Rubis, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. This certificate is presented in memory of Jim Lewis, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. This certificate is presented in memory of Gary Keyes, whose name has been placed on the memorial roll. Please continue to keep these families in your prayers. Thank you, Becky. 
we have lost several of our loved ones in our church over the past couple of years, and we are praying for all of you. Um, shall we all stand together? Um, we're going to sing Goodness, Love, and Mercy. And as we're singing this, um, if you can, give your tithes and offerings at, at this point, because our ushers are going to pick up the tithes and offerings um, after the song singing is done. <laughs> Shepherd, you make me lie in fields of green. You lead me by still waters. You restore righteousness to me. Though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil thing. For you are with me. for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
difficult seasons you're walking through seem to last forever and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, remember this. Even in the pain, God's promises remain true. Even in our hurt, God's heart for us doesn't change. And even in our fear, God is holding us near. Whatever we're walking through today, God is with us. He has promised us his presence. And he is working things out for our ultimate good and his glory. Romans 8, 28. What season are you walking through right now, church? And it seems to be lasting forever. God is with you, and he loves you, and he's for you.
for your presence, for just being our God, because you provide for us, you love us. There is nothing that we need that you haven't given us. You even throw our wants in there so many times. And so we thank you for being our God, and thank you for being uh, alive for us to worship right now. We are thankful, God, that at this moment in time, you saw fit to put us in a place where we can gather together and hear your word and sing to you. I pray you got honor from worship today as we do our very best to honor you with all that's going on in our world right now. It's good to have a, uh, just a good concentrated time to be together in your house and to just sing of good things and to sing of your goodness. And so we ask you to help us uh, even in our woundedness and even in our frustrations of life and even in the things that seem to pull our attention. We are thankful that we can come in and feel your presence. And I pray that would happen throughout the rest of this morning that as your word goes out, it's your word. It's not ours, and so we are careful to make sure that they're your words that we say, and I pray you would bless it. I pray you would put it into every heart that's here, Then, when we walk from here and go into our daily life, we'll be able to say that we're trying our best to do it for you, and so we just pray for that. We pray for Bob Arneson this morning, that you would go and touch him right at his point of need at home, he and Bev together where they are. I pray for Sheila uh, it, with her leg and the ACL and all that she's dealing with in her uh, physical body right now, so many others for um, Barb Sutton having a hip replacement on Tuesday up at the Mayo. I pray that you would help that to go perfectly fine. I pray that they got there safe, and I pray you'd meet their needs as well. So many others around us, those that have lost loved ones recently, uh, for those that uh, we just think about in our hearts right now, those that are sick for so many people. We just pray for your guidance and your healing touch. And now go into this time of the service today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. 
Good to see each one of you here today. Smile at your neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, who is my neighbor? You're going to find out who your neighbor is in a minute here during the message this morning. Um, I, I usually make announcements at the end. Let me make a couple quick announcements today. Tomorrow night, last softball game of the year, 745. Uh, I'm not sure which field we'll be on, but um, are you the coach then, Brock, tomorrow? Okay, unfortunately, he says, hey, listen, man, the way you're hitting, that's good stuff. We are seven and six. How about that, Ron? How about, yeah, yeah, see, seven and six. So that means we can't do any worse than 500. I said this at nine o'clock, and God's probably going to make me pay for it, but knowing who we're playing, there's a great chance we'll be eight and six. Now that I said that, we'll probably get destroyed, but yeah, huh? I'm not saying it out loud right now. I'll tell you, I'll tell you in private, all right? Um, but we, we have a great opportunity for that. So anyway, come out and you know what? If nothing else, it's always fun to see people watching and cheering for us on the other side and watching how we sometimes have to be Christ-like in a very unchrist-like church softball league environment. Can I get an amen on that? Good grief, man. If people think there's scouts in the stands or like we're going to win a million dollars or something sometimes, but it's just a game. Now, an unathletic person always goes to that level and says, it's just a game as I'm dragging my left leg to first base, right? But it is. But anyway, uh, that's tomorrow night. Then Tuesday night's my small group, 6.30. Wednesday night, 6.30, the teens will be here, and we'll have Bible study. And then in two weeks, we'll have communion uh, that Sunday, the 16th. Uh, both services, too, the 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock. And it'll be a very, uh, very safe way to do it, too. So don't be concerned with, you know, all that's going on. We got to be very careful about So. Um, we'll take care of it that way, but we're going to have communion that day. I think it's a good time to have it. Uh, school's about to start, so every child in the... Did I say school out loud? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say the word school. The word school shouldn't be said at this time of year. School is a terrible word to say, school. Did I say school? Yeah, sorry. When I was a kid, August came along. Listen, if you want my opinion, and no one does, school should not happen but between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Can I get an amen on that, right? All the kids went nuts right in there. I don't know what happened to these guys making them go into June and starting in August. I would have boycotted school if I'd have had to do that when I was a kid. I kind of did anyway, but anyhow. Um, so remember um, those things throughout this week because God is good. Isn't it good to see the stewards here with us this morning? I walked, yeah, I walked in. That's like a quarter of the people clapping. That's pretty good, you know. Hey, that's like... Do we want to clap or not? Yeah, but anyway. Tyler's got his mom and dad with him back there. Good to see you. Thanks for coming today. All the way from Coldwater? That's, did you drive this morning or have you been here? You've been here. Okay, that's all he's saying. Yeah, going, We've been here. Now quit looking at me, right? That's for sure. But hey, it's good to have you guys here with us this morning as well. And uh, are you still here? Did you drink the coffee in your bag yet? Did you have coffee or candy in your bag? You had coffee? I gave a kid coffee. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, you can give it to your grandma because she sure needs caffeine. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's good. And it's Hope Arrington's birthday. Start singing. Wait a minute. Here we go. I would turn this song, but. The same people that clap for the stewards sang for you. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> we must, hey, we need coffee and donuts to get around here, don't we? It's, it's kind of getting that way, isn't it? No, hey, happy birthday. And congratulations. You guys are getting married when? April 17th of 2021, right? And here. And I'm doing it. Did I know that? Did you ask me that already? Did I just, I just signed up for that, right? Yeah. And then, uh. Faith is getting married October, but that's not here. Well, it might be if it's raining, right? Lisa, what's going on? Everybody's like running out of your house getting married. Are you, is there something wrong over there or what? I don't know. That's cool. That's very good. Congratulations, you guys. Very good. Um, hey, welcome to my house. I'm just walking around talking to people I, like I'm just <laughs> controlling things here. Um, we've been talking about Micah last week. And Carson, where did you come from? I didn't even see Carson over there. Carson, how much longer are you here before you got to go back to school? Next Saturday, and then when do you got to go back, big man? September? All right, why do you got to go back next Saturday and he's going back? Now, you're up at Northwest, though, right? I got North right. Give me a break. All right, so Northern, up in Marquette. 
And then you're back up in Petoskey, right? Anybody else college kids we got going back? Am I neglecting over this way? Anybody else? Let's pray for them then for sure. Pray for Marquette and Petoskey probably more than anything else I'd say, right? But pray for all that up there. Micah was a prophet. We talked about him last week to start the project off. Yeah, we call it the Micah Project because he was a prophet of God. We talked about prophets and their, their job that they had to get to have the privilege of telling everybody how bad they were and the, the stuff that God was going to come and do to them if they didn't straighten up. But in the process of telling them what was wrong, there was always love, Wayne, in the process of it because God doesn't just always tell you what's wrong with you, right? We feel that that's the way it is, Dave, you know, especially guys like me and you. All we hear about is how bad we are all the time. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Uh, well, me. I, I lump you in there with me sometimes. But we have to remember that God is not just a God of judgment. Remember the two main themes of Micah were judgment but also forgiveness. That he, not only did he judge and tell us where we need to measure up, but he never did that without telling you what you needed to do to get better. Isn't that the good thing about God? God gets a bad rap sometimes of always being the pounder. That all he wants to do is take all the fun out of my life and all he wants to do is uh, you know, tell me what's wrong and all of that and make me, make me have to walk the straight and narrow. Listen, I don't have to walk the straight and narrow. I want to. You're welcome for that. That's right. Luke, keep doing that stuff. That was pretty good. But warn me next time. I think I, my hair stood up a little bit. You can't tell it, but it did. So you have to want to do that. I don't just serve God just because everybody else is. There's a desire within me to want to do right. And that's what we talked about last week when he talked about the justly part. We want to do justly. We want to do what's right. But it's not a you have to do right. The longer I serve God, though, Ron, it is a have to because there's no other way of life but God's way for me. But the more I do it, the less of the have to. Now it's just ingrained. That's what we talk about walking a holy life, Lucy. It becomes second nature to do godly things. doesn't mean I'm perfect. My goodness, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. But it does mean I'm trying with the help of the Holy Spirit. So Micah reminds us of that. Remember last week we said the key theme in Micah was covenant faithfulness. It's a covenant faithfulness that consists not just a bunch of ritual yes we're in church today but don't let church time become a ritual because it can be very easily yep i came in i dropped the dime in the plate i'm good that's all i needed to do i did that i'll put up with the preacher for a half an hour that's all he gets and then i'm out the door that's fine because i hope that some of that will stick to you and make you just a little bit more like christ but when it becomes a hey man i get to go to church today it's, it's the Sabbath. It's time to go. Then we get to sing, and then I get to see people. You never know, Kim, what you're going to find out when you come to God's house and who you're going to see and, and how things are going to go. And the, the presence of God, because my hope is in the name of the Lord, not anything else. And so then he says, not only is it not just ritual, but in a proper expression of the primary form of love, which is what we're talking about last week, today, and next week. The primary forms of love are this, justice, mercy, and faithfulness, which is what Micah is focusing on. And I said uh, in Micah 7, here, here's, my, here's the little soapbox time, because you've got to have a little bit of that every week. In Micah 7, 18 to 20, says this. He starts talking to them about God's, uh, God's judgment. Micah's name means who is like God. And we know that there's no one that compares to God, Janet, whatsoever. Anywhere you could dig up, any time, any space continuum, there's no one like God. There is no one like our God. Amen? The God, the one that we serve, the one that makes all things happen. That's who we're here to worship today, by the way. Amen? There's no one like him. And so that's Micah's name. I almost want to have my name changed to Micah. Tell Micah we talked about her a lot today. All right? Micah 7 18 says who is a God like you pardoning iniquity passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance he does not retain his anger forever somebody say amen to that one isn't that good can you imagine if everything that we ever did wrong God held it against us like people in our lives do yeah I'll forgive you this time but that's about it because I'm sick of forgiving you and I remember what you did eight years ago and there's people that are still mad at each other over something that happened to them in high school Hello. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. This is the end of Micah's book as he's wrapping up what he writes to the people. It's getting to that forgiveness part 
that he gets at the end of. That's why I love the entire, his entire book. I mentioned it last week. At the beginning of it, he starts right into his message with the people and rolls on. I mean, I don't know that he knows he's speaking for seven chapters, but he realizes that his message to these people needs to be heard. And when you read through that, there's so much there. But it just gets better all the way to the end. And here's the last three verses. He says, who is the God? He pardons you. Who does that? What sense does that make to just pardon you? It's not that as soon as you do it, he just pats you on the head. You need to come to him for forgiveness. But when he forgives, he forgets. And then he says he doesn't stay mad forever because what he delights more in is love. It's like when, the older you get, the less drama you want in your life. Can somebody say amen to that? I don't need drama anymore. I'm not in middle school any longer or high school. I just need peace, and I just need the love of God in my life, and I just want everybody to love each other. That's why so many times I have you look at your neighbor, you're like, again? I looked at him last week. Well, do it again. Yeah, but I live with them. Okay, well, there's a bigger issue there then. But we need to love each other. And listen, all of us show love in different ways, Mike. Some are, you know, right now the huggers, like me, feel like T-Rexes. We walk up, we want to shake people's hands, and we want to hug, and you're like, no, I can't, and your arms are this short, and you got to go through there, and it hurts. There's some of you are like, yeah, go ahead and hug. I'm like, all right, but if you develop a cough, it's not my fault. There's serious business right now around us, so we have to be careful. At the same time, how can I express the love that I have in my heart unless I can do some of those things? Well, sometimes now it just resorts to other ways, which is what we're going to talk about today. But he says that. In verse 19, he says he continues to encourage them. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. How grateful I am that there's a sea of forgetfulness somewhere that it all gets chucked in and it doesn't float back to the top. It's forgotten. And then he says at the last verse, you will show steadfast love to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Church, can we together collectively as one group, I said it this morning, I'll say it again today, remember that we're all on a mission to win the world for Christ the best way we know how. Oh, don't tell me to knock on doors. I'm not. Don't tell me to pass out tracks. I'm not. Don't tell me that I'm not telling you specifically anything. But I'm asking you now, under the sound of my voice, even during the rest of the service today, if you are, your heart would cry out to God to say, Lord, wake me up. Get me out of the, the softness of everyday life. Help me stop telling myself what a rock star I am for doing little things that everybody else does all the time and hope put me into that zone of I can't praise and love and adore God enough. Praise him with your life. Praise him with all that you've got. Stop. I, I don't even know how to get on this without sounding like a jerk, but it's, it's to the point of not, okay, did my part. Everybody else needs to do the rest. We'll see that at the end of the message today. Okay. I plugged in. Half of you are mad at me already. I plugged it in now. That's good. Now that side needs to do their part. What I love about looking here, and I love, I feel like a duck at a, at a fair. You know, with those shooting games, Mike, get your gun out here and get ready to shoot. Because all I do is I go like this, and then ping, then I go back over here on this side. You know, when it was deeper, you could at least go in like that. But when I feel like I, feel like I look over here, y'all know y'all look the same this morning. Y'all almost have like a half a grin on your face. I don't know what we're serving outside, but that's a good thing. Because it's a whole lot better than walking in here and everybody's sitting down going, get this over with. We talk about worship a lot. Well, listen, worship, this is a concentrated time we have together. And you go, I don't want to harp on stuff, and I'm not going to do that. But when you come in, it's kind of a mirror into what you do during the week. You know, when you sit down to watch it, isn't it good to have live sports again, even if they are some of them are still a little confused about some things, but still live sports is live sports. And to sit down and watch that, to look down and watch all the, I said last week, the cardboard cutout people that they have to have because there's not real people in the stands. That's not happening here, by the way. We don't need any cardboard people in the pews. All right, if you're real and you're live, raise your hand. You sure? Some of you, I, God bless you. I'm kidding. I love you. When I come into God's house, when I get to see you, it's exciting. Stan, one of the greatest joys of my life is to see that mustache walk in this building right here. You ought to see him out there on the lawnmower when he comes by, and he always salutes me, and he does it in such a, a fantastic way. It almost makes me feel like somebody, you know, when he does that. Seeing you in the store, seeing you come into God's house, and, and it's not just, this is not our clubhouse. 
where we get to come in here and then you know, mock the rest of the outside world. It's a place where we come in and we're supposed to get filled up with the Holy Spirit to go out and be like Christ. So other people are going to want to know, what in the world's going on over there? I want to be a part of that. I don't want to look like everybody else, right? And Micah's trying to tell them that. Micah finally looks at him here in, in verses 6 through 8 of chapter 6, which is what we talked about last week. He says, all right, what shall I come before God with and bow myself before the Lord on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? What do I do? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? And I, and I know you're thinking, boy, he's really getting outlandish here. Does God really want us to do all that to prove, Mike, how much we love him? He says, no. And I love this first phrase. He has told you. This is a reminder. You've been told this before. Any parent has ever looked at their kid and said, how many times do I have to tell you this? And the child looks at you like, you said that? I have no idea. When did you ever tell me that? You know, give them that look like that. You know, hey, we look at God the same way. Well, Lord, uh, I feel like you told me that a couple of times before. Yeah. He says, here's what's required. Because when he says, it's not in ritual, it doesn't matter how many offerings you bring, it doesn't matter how much oil you bring, it's a heart thing. And so Micah says, he's already told you what is good and what the Lord requires. But to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Now you said, okay, last week, and we're going to talk about today and next week, the three-week call to all is going to happen in a couple of weeks down at the city park, all the churches and many of the churches in Cadillac together. And we've settled in on that verse because each night, each one of those is going to be talked about. Justice will be on Friday, uh, kindness and mercy and will be on Saturday, and then humility on Sunday. And so you're smart people. You realize last week we talked about justice, doing justly. So what's today? Gwen's on the ball. You see that? Be kind. And if you need a reminder, my favorite store was selling stuff this week. What's that say? Beckoned? No, be kind. Be kind. I thought about putting it on a headband and having it just like this. And I thought about doing the old flavor flav alarm clock around my neck and have this hanging here. I don't show how to do it. But I want you to remember. And already some of you, Scott Wing, have already clocked out. I'm already kind. This dude can't tell me anything about kindness I don't already know. I thought the same thing until I already started digging into the Word because we all like to think of ourselves as kind human beings. We don't hurt anybody, right? Why is Micah having to go back to basics here with them to remind them, okay, do the right thing, continue to do right, look to take care of everybody on the right level, seek for justice and, and right things, but then kindness, I mean, my goodness, aren't we all kind? I look out for my fellow man. You know, I, I allow people to walk probably one of the kindest places you'll find, the pedestrian walking, especially down there by the pavilion. You ever notice that? They have to paint parts on the road to let people walk. And yet we all sit there like they're, they're infringing upon our driving ability and privileges. We have to wait. Oh, I've got to wait on this dude to cross. And then somebody crosses and walks across the way. Right? Can you hurry up? Well, no, I really can't. I'm on foot. So just take a breather there, you know. All the things that we have to do to be kind sometimes feels like it's infringing on our rights. Being kind never hurt anybody. And the reason why, parentheses, have love kindness, because that's what the Bible tells us here, to love kindness. Not just be kind, but love kind. Embrace the concept of kindness, Kevin, so it comes out in all that we do. And I can't stand here, Casey, and give you, you know, fact-by-fact fact reasons on kindness. You manage McDonald's, man. That's the, that's the personification of kindness, handing out health food all day long. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. I'm confused. Kindness is this. Here's four things I want to tell you that kindness is. Number one, kindness definitely, guess what? It's a fruit of the Spirit. What? Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit? Yes, it is. Prove it, Brian. Thank you for asking me to prove it. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Have you ever seen the fruit list? This is the stuff that you get all you can handle. Paul wrote to Galatians. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, patience. What's that one in the middle there? The bologna in the sandwich is kindness. Goodness, faithfulness. What else? Gentleness, self-control. And against such things, there is no law. You know what that means, Marty? There can be tons of that going on in the world all the time. Kindness, gentleness, love, all that stuff. I always think of, I told him this morning, I always think of the doctor. 
Every time I ever go to the doctor for a checkup, they start talking about health. And he says, stay away from too many fats, you know, and the dairy and all this kind of stuff. But fruits and vegetables, you can have all that you want. Thanks a lot. Can you get some chocolate tasting broccoli in there maybe? Or the Brussels sprouts and not smell so bad and, and taste a little bit better? Or how about, you know, some, some celery with a little bit of taste instead of it tasting like water? You can have all you want of the stuff that doesn't taste the best. I just ruined all the kids. Eat your fruits and vegetables, kids. You don't want to end up like me, so make sure you eat those. But you can have all that you want. Why? Because it's good for you. And Paul's trying to tell them here, listen, it's a fruit of the Spirit. I'll go this far to say that if we're going to say that we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts and everybody that's under the blood and walking after Jesus feels that way because it takes the Holy Spirit to be saved, then kindness is fruit or proof that the Holy Spirit is in your heart because it fits that list. Oh, I'm gentle. Oh, I'm under control. Oh, I love everybody. Smile, I'll show you my teeth all day long. But kindness, where does that fit in? Isn't it the same? If it's listed by itself, it must carry its own characteristic. And Brandy, kindness can go a long way. But it has to come out of a Christian. Amen? What should you be? Remember, I mean, anybody remember what VHS tapes are? Anybody under, I don't know what the age would be, it looks at me like, v, oh, what is that? You know, digital. I remember the first time we had Shrek on VHS, and the kids, you know, we were in the DVD age, right? And my kids, they put it in, and uh, they, they saw a uh, part of it. It was a VHS. I don't even know what we were doing watching the tape at that point in time, but Connor was, well, Reagan might have been two. So we were watching Shrek, and he goes, hey, go back to that, Dad. I want to see that part again. So I had, to, I had to rewind it, but you have to hit it. And he's looking, he's going, what is it doing? It was, going, it was going backwards, right, on the screen. He goes, how do you do that? I go, well, it's the tape and the tape. He goes, the tape? Well, then we got done, and we got done watching it. And I had, I go, hang on, I got to rewind it. He goes, rewind it? What's that? I'm like, am I that old? He doesn't even know what rewind was. But on the front of every store you rented from always said what? Please be kind and rewind. So every time I saw the be kind part here, I kept thinking rewind. Now, there's, there's theology in that sentence, because I can make anything biblical if I think hard enough. What does God do with us as in his kindness when we forget sometimes to be kind? He'll rewind it as though it never happened. You're welcome. How about that? That's tweetable right there. When God forgives us, he rewinds it back to the part before it ever happened, Beth, and we get to start all over again when he forgives us. Amen? So if God is kind enough to rewind, when we forgive and show kindness, it gets us right back to that place where we need to be at. But it's a fruit of the Spirit. Kindness is part of the evidence that the Holy Spirit lives within you. Amen? Kindness is also a commandment. Now, some of you might hear that and think, okay, he's getting a little pushy with this stuff now. Who's commanding it here, you know? Show me where God says, thou shalt be kind. Well, I don't have that in that exact context, but it's all over the Bible, Bonnie, where it says to be kind. Amen? Where it shows us that Jesus was kind. How many times did Jesus deal with somebody and deal with them and kind of catch you. They were catching them in sin. They were catching them in all kinds of stuff. He was bringing people out. They were bringing them to him with all kinds of issues. And when he would heal them or when he would get them on the right track, he did it with such love and such grace. He didn't just say, oh, that's okay, honey, you know, and act like it's okay, do whatever you want. He told them, hey, everybody else here is messed up too, but be different than them and go out and change the way you're living. I forgive you. I believe everybody that was ever under his presence like that went away and lived a whole different life from that. The woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery, you name them where they were at. You know why? Because he had a kind heart. He talked to them about hard stuff, Jim, in a kind way. Kindness is a commandment. We'll prove the commandment. Ephesians 4. Wait a minute, Brian. Ephesians wasn't written by God. It was written by Paul. Yeah, but God let Paul write it to the church at Ephesus. And when you hear how he words it here, you're going to kind of think it comes from God. Be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you if you don't think salvation is the epitome of kindness my goodness he didn't have to do that did he have to send his son to die did he have to forgive us the way he does no that's that's kindness incarnate that's forgiveness incarnate be kind to one another who have you been kind to this week who have you shown God's kindness to? He says, do that. Be tender-hearted. Tender-hearted means that I'm not just looking after somebody for my own, but people aren't in my life, so I get something from them. 
that I have empathy for them. Lucy shared something with me before church. My heart goes out to you. I'm praying with you. We're going to see through it. It's going to be okay. But there's the stuff, the scratches in life, the dents that happen in life, that when you tell me stuff, Shelly, that happened, Mike, when things happen to you, it doesn't just happen to you. It happens to me. We get wrapped up in our own lives at times, and we forget that we're all in this thing together, having a tender heart towards other people. That knocks down all of the gaps between stuff. So he says here, hey, be tenderhearted. Forgive one another. Does it feel better to forgive or to ask for forgiveness? Well, they both feel pretty good. Asking for forgiveness takes a whole lot of crow. But there's times when I've had to forgive somebody, and when I'm done forgiving them, I'm like, you know what? I feel pretty good. Then I start going around, you know, causing trouble with people just so they can ask me to forgive them. Not really. But it's a good feeling. Because God in Christ forgave you. Why would I withhold that from anybody else being kind? Amen? Amen. And so kindness is a commandment. But now here's these next two really, really, really get me excited. Kindness is also a bridge. What are you talking about for a bridge? Kindness can be the start toward a relationship. Kindness can be the start to repair a relationship. Kindness can be something that can be used to probably just withstand any kind of turmoil at all. Praying ahead at time for kindness. I had a situation not long ago that came up, and I dealt with it. It's, I got word of something uh, just it's like two weeks ago, and uh, had to pray over it. Hurt, you know, some words and some stuff I had to deal with, and uh, stewed over it for a little bit. And you go through all the first emotions, you know, when you hear some stuff you don't really like. You know, at first you get, well, how dare they? And then you think, well, maybe I can see some truth in the middle of that, Tom. And then you get to the point of, well, where are they coming from? And then I'm just sitting there thinking, why am I going through it? Why don't I just check it and call them? But I, I sent the person a text, and they said, yeah, we can talk at this point in time and whatever going on. So I prayed. Prayed for, and they just said, Let, I'll call you. Okay. When they say don't call us, I'll call you. That's what you have to do. And I prayed really hard. I prayed for the right word. I prayed for the right spirit. I prayed for God to use me and so that I could be what? I could be kind. Because... Everything has some merit. And so, got on the phone. Here was a bridge time. You ever just have that phone call and your hand, your mouth is dry? Your heart is like, I mean, booming along the way. And you're holding the phone. You're thinking, all right, here we go. I got the phone up to my head. I'm, I'm like that, you know. I'm, I'm not kidding. I was like, I tried to act like a big bad guy. I'm the biggest marshmallow that ever walked the earth. I really am. I really am. And so, here I had the phone. And uh, they answered. I'm like, hey, hello? I'm like, yeah, how you doing? I, I was scared. I really was. Because I didn't want anything bad. But I had to fix it. It's one of those things that gnaws a hole in your gut until you fix it, but you don't want to do it. So I got on there, and we talked a little bit, and I said, well, I said a few words, and we got into the conversation real quick, and I kept praying, God, I just need to be kind. And we got to a point where I could kind of tell that they really weren't wanting to get into it very much either, and I really wasn't, and I, could, I got an opening, Jim, and I just said, you know what? I love you. So how about we just clear the deck and start from scratch again and uh, just go from there? And they said, I think that'd be a fine idea. And we prayed together, went on, talked about something else, and we were done. And I was like, whoo, ain't God good? Amen. And it was a bridge now because you were kind. Boy, I had a list a mile long of, are you kidding me? What in the world's wrong with you? And just defend myself and go, what good would that have done? Where would I have been right now? I'm not trying to act like I'm the greatest thing in the world. I have the greatest Savior in the world. And he's teaching me how to be kind. How is it a bridge? Well, Luke says in chapter 6, verse 27, I say to you who hear, oh, this is going to hurt. A little pre-lunch pounding on you this morning. Love your enemies. It gets worse. Do good to those that hate you. Oh. Then he goes on to say, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. You're going to want me to love an Ohio State fan here before it's all said and done. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you and from one who takes away your goods and do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, hey, we kind of had this verse last week, remember? Do so to them. What's that? The golden rule. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. So we're not even any better than the people that don't know Jesus now. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. 
And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. We should give without expecting anything in return. Love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you'll be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. No, he's not. Josh, the ungrateful and evil, and he pound it. Get rid of them. No, they need kindness. Because they're ungrateful and evil for some reason. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Two things about the bridge. Kindness is a great bridge to conversation. I was in line at, uh, I was getting checking out at Meyer. Lady was there, this is a couple weeks ago. Rainy Wednesday night, pouring the rain. Raindrops as big as I am coming down. And I was outside and I just started talking to the, the lady behind the register. And I said, hey, uh, how you doing? And she said, I'm good. And it was late. I said, well, how much longer you got to be here? It was almost like 9 at that point. She goes, I'm here till 10. I said, well, that's not too bad. At least she get out a little earlier. And she goes, well, I've been here since like 5. And I said, well, that's not too bad, a five-hour shift. She said, yeah, but I work at a doctor's office. I start there at 8. And I work there from 8 to 4. Then I come here 5 to 10. Then I go home. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty tough. And she said, yeah, my husband has cancer. Uh, he's had a lot of chemo treatments and a lot of doctor bills, and I'm doing this job to kind of help with those bills like that. I wouldn't have known that had I just said, and I ask them all that all the time. They know I'm the guy, hey, it's almost weird. What time do you get off? I'm not trying to ask you out for a Coke. I'm just asking, you know, how long do you have to be here so I can pray for you? And she told me that much, and right then my heart just went, everybody is coming from something. You know, we, we judge people. So I'm a face reader. So if you don't smile a whole lot, I'm going to think you hate me. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I've always thought that. But I know inside people's heart, everybody's outside is the way that it is. And, and it can be a bridge to just say, hey, how you doing? And mean it. They say one of the most throwaway comments, Mike, that we make anymore, hey, how are you? Nobody hangs around long enough for you to tell them. I think we're afraid you're going to tell them. And let me just whisper this so some of you in the room don't hear it. There's some people you don't want to ask how they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you'll hear about their toenails and their eyelashes and their corns and everything else that's going on. And the TV set and their neighbors, you know, and the blood pressure. After I had heart surgery, I joined this club. We all commiserate about our, our medicine costs, uh, blood pressure, doctor visits, co-pays, and all that. I'm like, I've turned into one of them, <laughs> you know. But there are people that just need that bridge of kindness. I said, you know what, I'll pray for you. She goes, I would appreciate that. I said, by the way, watch, the raindrops are huge outside when you leave. Phil Robertson, all of us, huge, we all love Duck Dynasty for one reason or another. Duck Dynasty, Phil, um, he read in his book that I read, he, uh, back when he used to just fish for a living, that's all he did was fish. I, I, rem I thought of this when I read the part that says, if they steal from you, don't hold back, give them more. He was fishing along the bayou there, Louisiana, rough, rough part. And he left his boat with the fish in it. He went back up uh, off the embankment to go get some other fish that he had caught and to get his stuff to get ready to go home. And he turns when he got his stuff and he looked. There goes his boat with all the fish in it. Somebody, a couple of kids got in it and stole it and was taken off. And he's like, where are they going? That's, that's what I, it's my harder, that's what I live on. That's what I do for a living. I sell fish. So he gets him and a friend jump in their boat and they start taking off chasing his boat. He had his extra fish and all of his gear and uh, they start chasing them down the water and the kids keep turning around looking going, who are these people chasing us, you know? And he's thinking, uh, where he's going to hide the body parts when he catches them and, and all, how mad he is and he's telling God. God, he had just become a Christian not long before that. He said, man, you know this is my living and why are you letting this happen? He's getting all mad, working up all this stuff and he said that was the longest boat ride for a reason because God had to work him over the entire time he's chasing his fish and his boat down and by the time he catches them by the time they get almost in they, they gave up they're like well these dudes aren't going to stop chasing us so they stop and they start to get out of the boat he goes hey he said if you wanted my fish all you had to do was ask for them and he gave him the fish in the boat and the extra fish he had in his sack he goes just give me my boat and they go you're they said he goes he got the greatest look ever they're looking at him like this guy ain't right he goes, and he looked at me, he goes, and I know how you're looking at me. No, I ain't right. Now get out of here before Jesus changes my mind. And he took the fish and he left. And they left. He got his boat back. And he's like, he told God the whole way back, why did I have to give that up? And God said, you know how many fish there are in the water? But there's so many chances that you had to show my love to people. He's like, mission accomplished. I think he's doing all right right now too, by the way. Here's our point. It doesn't hurt us a bit to be kind. It hurts us when we're not. Because here's the last one. Kindness is a remedy. This verse, I'd forgotten this verse existed until just yesterday, to be honest with you. Proverbs 12 says this. This is the best one of the lot. 
Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Your kindness could be what somebody needs today. Today! Don't say, yeah, I'm working on that, God. Give me till about October. I'll get better at it, Janet, in October, okay? Or maybe, you know, school's starting, so Katie, you're thinking, eh, you know, because Katie's outgoing, you know, loves to talk, loves to share uh, stories with people and just run around saying all the stuff there, right? So she's going to say, maybe I'll now's the time to be kind sometimes we have to even need to be kind to the people that we know some of the people that we live with some of the people that were in our family you know amongst families sometimes that's the hardest time to be kind with each other somebody needs to amen that so i don't feel like i'm alone what are you nuts yes family wears us out we just as soon sell them for other people or sell them for chocolate or something sometimes right being kind to the people you see all the time sometimes can be difficult but that's probably the best place to start because if I can't be kind to the people that I know don't even try to be kind to a stranger although sometimes being kind to a stranger is easier because I don't really know all they got going on they all need kindness I need kindness because if I'm going to believe what the golden rule says and if somebody out there is going to treat me the way they want to be treated then I should probably be kind to them as well so he says here that smile that hey you look nice today that hey how are you doing that hey you know whatever nice dress did you get a haircut you've been working out you know first Sunday of the month that's when I get paid Craig Craig is that most handsome dude in the church today right now first Sunday of the month I tell him I don't, he he looks at me he goes who's your favorite treasure I go God can I shine your shoes this morning but it's not just the first Sunday of the month it's all the time he's 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 a guy after God's own heart he's he's an example for me he's a great godly man I was thinking of Bob Rubis in the 9 o'clock service this morning about being kind, about being that remedy. Bob Rubis, if you would look at him the way he we miss him so much. I forget seeing him sitting right over there. What a great dude he was. In fact, it's hilarious. Carol King thought he and I hated each other for a while because he'd come into my small group. He just said what he thought. He comes sitting there and he goes, hey, little buddy, make this shorter. I'm going to pop a cap in you. And that's the end of it. I'm going to go, okay, well, hello. And I would just joke. Or he would say, hey, I don't like the look on your face. I'm going to come over there and wipe it off. And I'd sit up and I'd say, bring it on. You know, we would just joke like that. And I, I didn't realize he was that way at first. I had, to, I had to get used to him as well. And then it was like, okay, this is how. And he said, light. And the man passed away at 61. Remember, he got his diagnosis and lived about three months. And he said, life's too short to walk around being all sulked up and being mean and ugly. I've seen him take his wallet out and give the last dollar in his wallet to give people for gas money right there in the church lobby. I've seen him uh, listen to people when he felt bad. Even after he was sick, he would still meet me in my office and grab my hands and pray over me before every service for the message. He just gave all the time. But he said, I'm not perfect, but I have a perfect God in my heart trying to make me better every day. He goes, and the least I can do is be kind. The least I can do is be kind. And so that's what I want to do. It's a remedy. As they come with a song, the last example of kindness that's probably the, the strongest example. Remember, Jesus is talking to a man in the book of Luke, chapter 10. Jesus is talking, and a lawyer comes up to him. That's always exciting. A lawyer comes up to Jesus and says, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, Hey, what's written in the Word? What's the law say? How do you read it? He looks at him and he says, Okay, well, you're going to love the Lord God with all your heart? Micah's talking about the ritual stuff here. First thing that comes out of his mouth, ritualistic stuff, right? Love the Lord God with my heart and soul, uh, strength and mind, and my neighbor as myself. Those are good things. Jesus said, you've answered correctly. If you do that, you'll live. So he looks back at him and throws this to him. And I said earlier, say hi to your neighbor. Tell him you love him, Velma, right? So he comes back and he goes, that's great. I got to love my neighbor and myself. Just identify who those people are so I don't have to be nice to everybody. That's what he's saying. Who's my neighbor? Jesus said, I'll tell you who your neighbor is, but in classic Jesus fashion, he never just says it. He tells a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him, beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. You ever heard this before? Only about a million times, right? Now, by chance, here comes the preacher, the priest, going down the road. Where is he going? He's got his little be kind sign. He's got his Bible in his hand that weighs 50 pounds. He's got his glasses in his pocket. Just got paid yesterday. He's got a pen right here. He's strutting down there, going to be just like Jesus. It said the priest is going down that road, and the dirty, rotten scoundrel saw him, and he went on the other side. Let's cut his pay. He doesn't do what he says, right? 
he said, the preacher should take care of that guy, but he didn't. Likewise, here comes a Levite. He came to the place and he saw him. Levite could be an elder in the church. He was a teacher uh, in, in the church. He was somebody in high position, very well thought of, very well respected. He saw him. Here's a body. Can I, can I emphasize enough? Who had been beaten and stripped and laying there half dead, and they're going on the other side of the road and leaving him laying there. The Levite saw him. What did he do? Pass by the other side. What's this say? Be kind. Even when I don't know what to do, I can be what? I can be kind. And a lot of times I don't know what to do. And if I saw a body laying in a ditch, I really wouldn't know what to do. But I would start somewhere, call 911 at least, stay there with him. But a Samaritan, a dirty, rotten Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, what did he do? Instead of going the other way, he looked and said he had compassion on him. Oh, I can be kind. What did he do? He just used what he had. He said he bound him up, bound up his wounds, and I don't know how many of you leave home. I better take some bandages just in case. Maybe you should. Kayla should have. She had blood on her knee this morning when I saw her over there, right? Maybe you should put some stuff in your body. Everybody with your purse. How many of you with a purse have at least something that you could grab for a snack in case church goes long, right? Don't you? Something in there? My grandma always did. She always had, I think she stole them from the restaurant on the, on the tables when they give you crackers. She always had crackers. Wherever we were, I'd say, Granny, I'm hungry. She goes, you want a cracker? I'm like, yeah, my name isn't Polly, but I'll take one right now. She always had something. I don't know what was in there, but what you needed was in there. She pulled out a car battery, you know, mercure chrome, water. I don't care what it was. Whatever we had was in Granny's purse. That's a message, Granny's purse. But he goes to him. He bound up his wounds. He poured oil and wine on them to, to purify them. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Do you understand the sacrifice on putting him even on, the, on his animal? You know, he had already been with him long enough, Tanson, to take care of his needs and to band him up. A lot of times, that would have been good enough. Hey, I'll call you a cab. But he had his animal, and remember, he's heading to town. I don't know how long the journey was from there, Tony, but the sacrifice of this is just a one-man animal, he puts him on the animal and leads him along the rest of the way to town to the inn. Who does that for somebody they don't know? Who does that for somebody they know? And he gets him. He pulls out two denarii at the inn. He gives it to the innkeeper, says, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I'll repay you when I come back. Not, hey, this is all I got right now. If he needs any more, tough luck, <laughs> right? Put him out in the street after the time runs up. He goes, no, I'll be back. He came back the next day. He's willing to come back a third day. What is this guy made of? So Jesus tells the story, verse 36. Which of these, mic drop moment, I would have loved to see Jesus' face right now. Hey, which of these, the two, the two high rollers or the Samaritan proved to be a neighbor, proved kindness to this man. I would say you're correct, JC. Good job. He says, who fell among the robbers. 37, he said, the one who showed mercy. The lawyer got it right. What did Jesus say? Go and do likewise. That's what I close with today. Can you go as we stand, they get ready to sing. Can you go and do likewise? What's it say here? Wish I had 300 of these right here. I told him at 9 I was going to get an ink pad and stamp that and put it on our heads as we leave out of here and just go and be kind. I have never been kind and regretted it. I regretted it before I did it and think, I don't know if I can do this or not. But I've never been kind and been sorry for it. I don't know what's going on in your life and I can't, I don't live with you and I don't know what you're dragging around and I don't know what you're trying to get rid of and I don't know your situations but I do know this at my worst moments when I just forget who I am and remember who he is and try to be kind that works a lot of things out Teresa in my life I don't know where you're at this week but I ask you right now to ask God to allow that, that spirit fruit of kindness to come out because it's probably going to have to happen or he wouldn't have me talk about it today Jen it wouldn't, it wouldn't be coming up I think we're going to have to show some kindness somewhere along the way. In fact, we do all the time. So how's that going to look this week? Let's talk to God about it, okay? Father, we love you. Grateful for your word that is plain to us. Grateful for this great host of people that have chosen to come and worship with us today. And right now, God, it's not about, it's not about looking in front of certain people a certain way, and it's not about showing off. And we certainly don't want to do anything outside of your will. But at the, at the very least... 
the very most uh, basic premise of humanity is being kind is being loving is being gentle that fruit of the spirit but the kindness we talk about today and loving kindness loving being kind chasing after having that ability to do that for all that are in our lives form us into that shell even now and yet yeah, it's not easy and it's a it's a challenge and it's harder to do it to the people that may not give it directly in return but it's what you call us to do part of you shaping us so i pray right now god if there's anyone that needs to come and pray for help in that area help them to come and even if it's not that maybe they came in burdened maybe they came in with a, a need whatever it might be open up these altars and make the spirit flow throughout this room as we sing for prayer to come in jesus name Oh
life. On each table out here, uh, I'm not trying to insult you. It's just priming the pump a little bit. We're talking about kindness and uh, acts of kindness. So there's a list for teens. There's a list for adults. Whichever one you are, grab them. That actually doesn't really matter, I guess, because either one of us could do either one. But uh, it's called Summer Acts of Kindness Checklist. So for adults, things like uh, plant a tree, collect litter, uh, introduce yourself to somebody new, give a compliment, smile. Like, man, Brian, I don't need to be reminded of that stuff. Maybe you do. And just have this list around to look at to say, oh, hey, have I smiled today? Or has that happened? So they're on either table, whatever side you go out. And it, just humor me. Just grab them anyway. Maybe you think, all right, I'll get him off my back. I guarantee you, though, if you grab one, now it's going to be stuck in your head. You're going to have to do at least three of them on there. Same with the teens. I love these. Hold the door up for somebody. Make somebody else's bed. What? Who does that? Kind of? Clean up a mess you didn't make. You're welcome, parents. I'm just trying to serve. That's all I'm trying to do. But um, grab a list, whichever one you are, and, and learn. just continue to what? Be kind. And in the, in the interest of kindness, one of the kindest men I've ever met in my life, Ron Stewart. Uh, glad he and Gina and the kids are here. But he's going to come. He's going to close us in prayer. And uh, have a great week. Remember all of our announcements. And uh, just continue to let God bless you. Good Lord, thank you so much for for all that you do for us, Father. I know that's why Brian wanted me up here. God, you are so amazing to us. Help us, Father, when when we're downtown, when we're at work and things aren't going right and things are and we get angry, Father, we don't we're not happy. Help us to remember what Brian talked about today. Be kind. That's something we tell our our kids every day. Just be kind. If all else fails, just be kind and it'll be better. Thank you so much, Father, for everything you've done for us. Help us go with us today, home, work, wherever we go. And especially in these crazy times now when we're not supposed to hug and touch each other. Just help us to be kind any way we can. It's a frustrating time right now. Let's just try to be kind. In your loving, gracious name, Father, bless your Jesus.